you're about to start work on your next song. You know the song and you know the chords, but you're not too sure how to strum it. Now, if that sounds familiar, this video is for you. So there seems to be a lot of people out there who have trouble interpreting the rhythm of a song in order to turn it into an effective playing style, be that strumming or finger picking on a ukulele or a guitar or similar instrument. Now, some people have a natural flair for rhythm, and if that's not you, all is not lost. Chances are you haven't been briefed on what to listen for when you're listening to the track. Now in this video, I'm going to bridge that gap with some simple drum beats and some illustrations. Let's make a start. So let's fire up a simple rock beat. And I'll put this illustration up on the screen so that you can actually see what you're listening to. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the first thing to draw your attention to is that 4-4 four, four on the left hand side of that illustration. The 4 at the top is telling me that there are 4 beats to the bar. Now 4-4 four, four time or common time is the time signature that uh, applies to most pop and rock songs. And when I say there are 4 beats to the bar or 4 beats to the measure as some people call it, that means there are 4 time intervals in a bar. Each time interval is of the same duration, just like there's seven days in a week, and each day is the same length. Now, in each time interval, things can happen. Drums can be hit, notes can be played. And that's how we would represent a tune or a beat in terms of representing, let's say, the music on, on paper. The other thing to note, 133 BPM. That's beats per minute. So that's actually telling us how fast you play those bars. So for instance, at 133 beats per minute, uh, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Whereas a slower song like a rock ballad could be 60 BPM and it would be like this, one, two, three, four, etc. So the principles here are the same irrespective of whether we have a fast or a slow song. So the piece of music I'm using here is actually eight bars long. And the measures or bars are bounded there by those vertical yellow lines. Now as it happens when it comes to the drumming, each bar is identical. So the same thing happens in each bar. So if we just focus say on bar number one, we explain all of the rest of them. So if you look at uh, uh, beats, uh, beat intervals one and three, you've got kick drum. If you look at beat intervals two and four, you've got a snare drum. So if I was to count that, it'd be one, two, three, four, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. But to make the, the, the beat rock, uh, the drummer inserts an additional kick into interval two, which happens immediately after the snare. So it's kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So you see, uh, two events might typically happen inside the same beat interval, like a hi hat. There's two hi hat hits in each beat interval, going alongside the kicks and the snares, and that's how a drum beat typically hangs together. So when you listen to a track. What you need to be able to do is join the track by counting along with it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Kick, snare, kick, snare, etc. So that when you actually can, uh, let's say, interpret the, the, the rhythm of the track like that, you're well on your way to being able to work out how to strum it. Right. So the next thing you might say to me is, I've been listening to this track and I can't hear the kick drum. 
I can hear the snare all right, but I can't hear the kick drum. Well, that's not unusual because quite often the kick is is buried in the mix. But this is where our friend the bass guitar comes into play because the bass player and the drummer's kick drum are closely aligned to each other. So every time, as a rule of thumb, that the drummer plays the kick drum, the bass player plays a bass note. So we can actually track the kick drum through the bass guitar. Now the bass player will play some additional notes. They'll be supplemental to give uh, the music a bit of feel. He rarely plays a, a note across the snare drum, so you will always hear the snare. Now for our drum sequence, let's add in that bass line and see what it sounds like. Have a listen. One, two, three, four. 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 Now, when it comes to the rhythm guitar or rhythm ukulele part, this is how you'd interpret it. So. Generally, as a rule of thumb, on beat one, you play a downstroke. And on beat four, you also play a downstroke, as a rule of thumb. Now, if I run that sequence that we have there, I'm going to play along with it with one of the most simplest strumming patterns you could possibly have. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. So two things to take note of in that performance. First, I am playing one downstroke per beat interval in time with the kick and the snare drum. Also, I'm introducing a little bit of intonation, if you remember that term. So what I'm doing is when I play a downstrum against the kick, I'm inclined to hit the bass strings. And when I'm playing over the snare drum, I'm inclined to hit the higher end strings. So you get that sort of swing thing. As opposed to. Okay. Now, next, I'm going to busy things up a bit. Now, remember, our time here is one, two, three, four. And I did say earlier on that you can allow for sort of two events to take place in each beat interval, just like a hi-hat. So now I'm going to play it with two strums in each beat interval. Let's give that a go. Okay, so a couple of things to note in that performance. I'm playing two strums in each beat interval. And the best way to count that is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And on each of the, the main uh, numbers, one, two, three, four, I'm playing a downstroke. And with every and, I'm playing an upstroke. Now, not only am I playing the bass strings against the kick drum and I'm playing the upper end strings against the snare drum, I'm also adding in some more intonation so that when I'm playing against the snare drum, my downstroke is slightly harder to emphasize that. So again, that's our intonation. Hard and soft strokes, long and short strokes. You remember that one? Okay, let me just demo that again. Okay, now if I wasn't doing that, what would it sound like? It sound like this. And that reminds me 
of a quote from a previous video of mine. Roll it there, Colette. Now, there's nothing better than a good old robotic strumming pattern to kill any song, so we need to avoid that. Now it's time to mix things up a bit. We've had the busy strum of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and we've had the simple strum of 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's mix it. Let me run that one. So what did you think of that? Easy, isn't it? Now remember, when you play along with your favourite song and you're strumming away, you're going to play by feel, not by rote. Now I've given you some boundaries to work within. I've shown you how uh, a bar of music works, how the kick and the snare hang together, uh, how you play the downstrokes and the upstrokes on the ands and all that type of stuff. But ultimately, it's up to you now to make uh, use of that uh, basic information and play by feel. Now, there was a statement I made in an earlier video in this series where I said, I ride the rhythm of a song playing with intonation, hard and soft strokes, long and short strokes. And now that you've been through this video, I just hope that you understand what I meant. My name is Greg, this is the Low G Uke channel, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again.